Hi, Jay Van Gordon here with FCP Euro, and today we're going to be replacing the thermostat on this Mark IV 1.8 turbo. Alright, so this DIY is applicable to all the 1.8 turbos on the Mark IV chassis, which includes the Beetle, the Golf, and the Jetta from 99 to 2005. Uh, and it can also be applied to the Mark I TT, the Audi TT as well. Um, basically, um, pretty simple DIY, it's a little difficult to get to, uh, but it includes the thermostat housing, uh, comes with a seal on the back end, some new hardware, thermostat, an O-ring, and you're going to want to replace some coolant as well. Some of the common signs that you're going to need a thermostat, uh, particularly are if your engine is overheating, um, but more so on these cars, Volkswagen is notoriously known for poor plastic coolant housings, uh, basically over time the housing gets very brittle. Um, you know, think about you know, thermal expansion, cooling, heating, cooling, heating. Over time, they do get brittle and crack. So you'll start to see either the plastic crack or um, you know, it'll just start leaking from the seal itself. So when these cars were newer, uh, you can expect to do these thermostats um, or at least have them fail or leak, typically around like you know, 70 to 100,000 miles. Um, but with that said, you know, this car behind me is a 2002. These are a little bit older in age now, so you know if, if you're either a current owner or you're just picking one up, it's not a bad idea to at least inspect around the area and, and see if there's any coolant leaking. Um, but you know, as time goes on, you can expect these to fail. So now we're going to look at some of the tools that we're going to need to tackle this job. All right, the tools you're going to need uh, to complete the thermostat replacement on this car are a couple of quarter inch drive ratchets, uh, both short and long. Uh, same thing with the extensions, uh, combination short ones, long ones. Um, you're gonna need a five millimeter Allen socket, a 13 millimeter short quarter inch socket, a uh, long eight millimeter quarter inch socket, a long 10 millimeter quarter inch socket, a 10 millimeter quarter inch drive uh, swivel socket. Not a bad idea to have a mirror on hand uh, a pry bar or a flathead screwdriver to help get some of the old stubborn hoses off, uh, a pick which is going to aid to get the thermostat out of position, uh, hose clamp pliers, and also I'd recommend having some uh, penetrant oil such as PB Blaster and, uh, and also some silicone spray to get the hoses off. So with that being said, let's get into the job. Alright, first things first, um, for demonstration purposes we're going to lift the car on the, on the lift here, um, but if you're doing this at home just crawl underneath and we're going to drain the coolant. Really quick tip, just to have the coolant drain a lot faster, just remove the expansion tank cap. All right, so we're under the car. Uh, we're gonna twist the drain cock here to the left and drain the coolant. Make sure you have a bucket underneath to catch. All right, so you're gonna let the remaining coolant drain out and once it's drained out, go ahead and twist the drain cock back to tighten. Next, we're gonna remove the battery cover and disconnect the negative terminal. We may be moving the alternator uh, harness. They're removing that off the alternator, so uh, this is to disconnect the electrical system. Make sure you tuck this down below. Um, wires always have memory and they tend to go back where they are, so just make sure it's uh, in the spot where it's not going to pop back up. Next, remove the dipstick. Now, this is a Volkswagen, so don't be alarmed if A, your dipstick breaks, or B, the dipstick tube. Uh, breaks off. Um, you may want to order a separate one if it hasn't been replaced yet. Now we're going to remove the two 10 millimeter uh, nuts. This is for the air pump lines. And we're just going to move this hose off to the side. Now keep in mind this is a newer hose and it's awfully, awfully brave of me to move this. So if you have the original hose, uh, something else to keep in mind, you know. This, uh, this plastic tends to break over time, gets really brittle, so you might want to have an extra one on, on hand to replace. Now we're going to remove these two 5 millimeter Allens. Not a bad idea, just tap them into place. Mine are like really rusty. Alright, so next we're going to remove this connector on the back here. Now we're going to remove, there's going to be a 10 millimeter nut here that's going to hold this hose in place. Now there's a small little vacuum line here. Uh, these tend to get really brittle over time, so just we're not putting too much pressure on it. We're going to slide that one off. And voila. This is the vacuum line I was talking about. Nice and cracked. 
Next we're going to remove this air pump hose. Um, this, this hose runs right across and it's going to be like right in the area where we're working. So I'm just going to remove that and get it out of the way um, just to make more space. And I'm going to flip this out of the way. I'm going to flip this out of the way. Cool. Next, we're going to take a microfiber and we're going to tuck it underneath this hose here. So, because we're going to now remove this coolant hose and there may be some residual coolant that will come out. So, just to catch it, and we're going to take our hose clamp pliers and we're going to use a pry bar and pry against the intake. That's just going to help aid to get this hose off. Now I just took a little rag and uh, I threw it inside the hose just so, you know, in case any fluid comes out, it's not going to leak all over the place. So we'll take that hose, stuff it down, get it out of the way. Uh, we can take our microfiber out now. Okay, so this is basically how the flange is positioned right now on the block. Um, so there's going to be two 10 millimeter bolts, um, one on top, one on bottom. Top one's very easy to get to, bottom one is a little bit difficult. Um, so we're going to go ahead and remove those now. And uh, once you remove the flange, just be careful um, to make sure you remove the O-ring. Um, it should be pretty obvious, but I have to mention it. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and start to remove the 10 millimeter bolts. I have a swivel 10 millimeter socket. All right, so we cracked our top bolt loose. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to disconnect this, uh, this alternator harness here. So the connector, there's this little cap here, um, a nut underneath it, and we're going to slide the harness out of the way. Um, the reason why is we want to make sure that we have all the access that we need to get onto this lower bolt. All right, so we got the nut off. Uh, we disconnected the wire from the alternator. We got the connector off. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of a bracket here that holds the, uh, the harness to the alternator. Uh, again, we're going to try to get this thing out of the way. And uh, I believe it's going to be an 8 millimeter uh, nut that's, that's pretty much exactly where my socket is. It's going to be a little difficult to show you. but. Trust me, it's there. So go ahead and remove that. Now remove the harness. Now we're going to try to remove this uh, lower bolt. Again, same size, 10 millimeter. Use a swivel socket, long extension. But as I mentioned before, now we got the harness out of the way. Like we, you literally need to be right up against the alternator uh, to get that socket on square. Now with the magnet, just reach down and you can grab the bolt with these so you don't drop it. All right, now same thing. I'm just going to stuff a microfiber down in there and try to absorb any type of fluid that's going to leak out once I pull this flange off. All right, so we got the bolts off. I'm just going to go ahead and pull the flange. All right, so we're going to go ahead and pull the thermostat. Uh, just be sure to make a note of the orientation. So it's almost like an arrow pointing out. Uh, you don't want to put this in backwards. All right, so at this point, um, not a bad idea to get a drain pan underneath the car because once we pull this thermostat, it's going to leak. So go ahead, get a hook tool underneath it. All right, so we have the thermostat out for this next step. If you have um, a little bit of Scotch-Brite pad, uh, you can use that just to clean the surface. We're gonna go and clean the surface of where this thermostat sits onto the, uh, to the block. Um, I don't have Scotch-Brite, but I'm gonna use a microfiber and some brake clean. So I'm just gonna spray the brake clean on there. All right, now we clean the surface. We're gonna go ahead and install the thermostat. The gasket. Seat the O ring in there. Now let's go ahead and seat our flange. So 
So this is the trick part is you got to make sure that you don't disturb the seal. So seems like it's still flat. All right, so we got our flange in place. We're going to get our alternator wiring harness. Again, there's that bracket with that eight millimeter nut that holds it in place. So I'll go ahead and slide that onto the bracket. So we'll slip the bracket right on. Now go in with your eight millimeter. So basically I have the nut, it's already in the socket. And I put a little piece of uh, like butyl tape or anything. It's just gonna hold that nut in so it doesn't fall out of the socket. You could even use like a paper towel. You know, it's basically just taking up the gap between the, the nut and the socket. And we're gonna thread it in. Now go ahead and install your connector for the alternator. And go ahead and install wire. Now go ahead and remove the paper towel, obviously. I thought you weren't about to for a And we're gonna slip the hose onto the flange. There's a bump stop on the flange, so you can't put it on too much tighter than you need to. Now take your hose clamp pliers, and grab that clamp. All right, so now we're in the last steps. Um, we need to fill the coolant and then we're gonna re uh, reconnect the battery. So as you notice, I have, what this is, is a vacuum coolant filler. Um, and what that does is essentially like the name, it creates a vacuum in the system. It uses compressed air from an air compressor, creates a vacuum in the system, and then it uses that vacuum to pull coolant back in. And essentially what that does is it prevents any type of air pockets or air bubbles uh, to be in the system. Um, now I realize most people won't have this in their toolbox. Um, they are relatively inexpensive. You can purchase them for relatively cheap. If you don't want to purchase them, there are some retailers out there who will rent them to you. Um, if you just don't want to use it all together and you don't have an air compressor, for example, um, you can go the traditional, traditional route and fill the coolant, uh, just you know, mix coolant via the bottle. The only thing, you run the risk of the air bubbles. So what you want to do is just start the car up at, the, at that point, uh, turn the heat on full blast, um, let it idle, let it come up to temperature so the thermostat opens and then hopefully all the air bubbles will work themselves out. If they don't work themselves out, uh, what you can do is uh, you can leave the car overnight, just jack up the passenger side, passenger side because that's where the coolant bottle is and that's the highest point in the cooling system, and uh, leave the cap off and hopefully all the air bubbles will work themselves out. Go ahead and reinstall the coolant cap. All right, now we're gonna take our secondary air hose, the larger one, and connect that back to the air box. We're gonna go ahead and flip over the bracket and put that back into position. Uh, before we bolt the bracket up, we're gonna go ahead and reconnect our connector down here. Now, if you remember, we have this bracket that holds uh, the air pump hose. Put that back into place, secure it with a nut. All right, so now we're gonna take our 10 millimeter nut here and we're gonna slide it on, thread it in place. I'm going to start this by hand just to get it on. All right, I'll throw a ratchet on it. Now we're going to go ahead and secure the bracket to the intake manifold uh, at this time. Also go ahead and connect your dipstick tube and secure it onto the bracket. The two bolt sizes for the bracket are five millimeter allens. We're gonna go ahead and snug those, or at least thread them into place first. Once they're both threaded into place, we're gonna go ahead and tighten them down. Next, we're gonna take our other secondary air hose and put it into place on the bracket. I'm gonna connect it on this end. Should hear a nice snap. That was either the snap of success or the snap of breaking. I'll let you guys decide. <laughs> now go ahead and thread on your two nuts that secure uh, the secondary air hose to the bracket. Again, two 10 millimeter bolts. Now go ahead and install your dipstick. Now go ahead and install the negative terminal on your battery and tighten that down.
Now go ahead and install the top cover. All right, guys, so that's how you replace the thermostat on this Mark IV 1.8 turbo. Uh, again, if you're noticing any type of leaking coming from underneath the, uh, the engine on the passenger side, uh, it could be coming from that thermostat flange. Um, also, if you're noticing any type of engine overheating, uh, it could be that your thermostat is, uh, is stuck. Uh, so again, not too bad of a job, as you saw. Uh, a little tedious to get through some of those bolts, but overall, not too bad of a job. Uh, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Any comments or questions, don't forget to comment in the box below. And also, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.